Hey, it's Chris. Getting a new computer is kind of like getting a new car in that when you get it and it's new, it's flawless and amazing. And then once you drive it off the lot, so to speak, maybe it starts getting a little bit dirty on the inside and outside, might get a scratch or a ding here or there. I just wish that it would stay nice forever. I always hate that first fingerprint on the screen. You know what I mean? Since I had to send my new 16 inch MacBook Pro back to Apple and get a replacement, I thought this might be a good time to just talk about how I set up a brand new Mac. So talk about what settings do I change? How do I set up my dock and my menu bar? All of that kind of stuff. And for this one, I'm gonna put some timestamps down in the description so you can skip around if you wanna hit what's most interesting to you. Now, personally, I like to set up a new Mac from scratch rather than importing any apps or settings or anything like that, just to get rid of any dead weight that might have accumulated since the last time I got a new computer or set it up. But I'm really happy with myself this time because before I got rid of the old computer, I screenshotted my dock, my settings, my menu bar, my browser plugins, everything, and stuck it in a note so it would make this setup a lot smoother and faster. Now when I'm going through the very first initial setup screen, I don't share my Siri voice recordings, and I appreciate that Apple asks. I don't store files from documents and desktop on iCloud Drive because I have a lot of big screenshots and screen recordings on the desktop that are just temporary and take up a ton of space that I don't need backed up. I definitely do turn on File Vault disk encryption, and I turn on Auto Dark Mode and turn on True Tone. So once the Mac's actually up and running, let me tell you the first four things that I actually do. Starting with number one, download my password manager, which in this case happens to be one password. So I'm able to log into all the apps and stuff that I'm about to download. And then subscribers know I've been using the 49 inch LG ultra wide monitor. And in order to get the full resolution potential out of it, I've been using a program called Switch Res X. Number three, I mess around with the wallpaper. Now by default, I've still been liking the Catalina wallpaper, but when I get sick of it, I head over to Unsplash and search around for something nice and minimal. Number four, I download Chrome. I would much rather use Safari, but for some reason YouTube doesn't work right for me unless I'm in Chrome. And I also rely on several Chrome plugins for the business as well. But I do install an app called Bumper, and don't worry, I'll list these all down in the description, that lets me choose which browser to open stuff in when I click on links. The next thing that I do is install my professional app stack. So for me, that's mostly creative stuff. I'm just gonna breeze right through these because I know not everybody does creative stuff and it could be boring. First and foremost, Final Cut Pro 10 for editing videos, followed closely by M Installer from Motion VFX, which contains some Final Cut plugins. After that, it's Adobe CC or Creative Cloud, and the three main apps that I grab out of there are Photoshop, Lightroom, and Audition. Compressor is also part of my workflow, which lets me batch convert videos to HEVC format for really fast uploads. And then finally, remove.bg, which batch removes backgrounds of images for me. Next, I wanna talk about what I do with my Mac's menu bar in the top right of the screen there. And this is probably gonna be one of the more interesting parts of this video because it's some of the stuff that really just makes everything flow really nicely for me when I'm settling in to do some work. The first thing that I put on my list to install was Jest Timer, which I did pronounce right in the last video. It's Gesture Timer. And it's just a really easy way to click and drag for time-based reminders. After that, I make sure to grab Theme, which is kind of like caffeine for your Mac. It won't let it go to sleep once you click it. I also grab Tweet Fast, which lets me tweet really fast, just like it says, right from my menu bar without even having to open Twitter. And then another app that I covered recently, File Cabinet Pro, is next, which gives me a fully functional finder window up in my menu bar. Desk Cover is also something that I appreciate because when it's active, it helps you focus on one specific window and fades everything else in the background out. And then finally, I install Bartender 3, which lets me organize my Mac's menu bar and hide all the clutter. Something else that I just featured recently, but that I definitely wanted to install this time around is Dropover, which lets you have a shelf when you select a bunch of items, shake your mouse, a shelf appears, and you can drag and drop stuff into that shelf, then navigate to wherever you wanna take it out and just drop it back out of that shelf into the folder, onto the desktop, wherever it needs to go. It's super handy. And I like it better than something like Yoink. And then for my LG monitor, there's some specific proprietary software that goes with it that lets me divide up the screen really quick, really easily, and snap windows into place. So if I just want three windows open and fill up that screen, I can do that, or four, or six, or whatever, and then rearrange things, 
it's really great. Now let me mention some of the first settings that I like to tweak and tune just to get things running exactly how I like. The first thing I do is change my screensaver to the new Catalina screensaver called Drifts. Everybody asks me about this. It's just built into Catalina, but how often do we actually get a new screensaver from Apple? Never. So I'm definitely making the most of that. After that, I make sure that I can log in with my Apple Watch rather than having to type in my password or use Touch ID. And that can be really useful when you're in clamshell mode, for instance, but I just like to have that on anyways. I also make sure to show the Bluetooth icon in my menu bar so that I can connect to my favorite wireless headphones really fast, particularly my Beats Solo Pros or the AirPods Pro. Then I like to head over to my desktop and change the view to use stacks which groups together like files in order to reduce clutter. So all your screenshots go in a stack, all your screen recordings go in a stack, etc. Then while I'm still on the desktop, I like to hit command plus or minus, minus in my case, on the desktop because I just like the icons just a little bit smaller than they come by default. Then I head back into the actual settings pane and I tweak some things in the power and screensaver departments. And I like to set the screensaver to start a little bit later and the computer to not sleep unless I actually want it to so that I can upload a video for instance when I'm away from my desk and not worry about it getting cut off. And then finally, this isn't really a setting but it's something I like to do. I grab a couple of fonts that I know I'm likely to use that don't come on the system by default Default, one of them being Gilroy, which is sort of the default daily tech font, which I bought on my fonts. And then I grabbed San Francisco, the newest Apple font, and some others. Now, let's talk about how I organize my dock. So I definitely don't keep the default arrangement of all of Apple's stuff. I get rid of all the iWork apps. I get rid of the Apple TV app. Then I open back up my settings and I set the dock to auto hide and then I adjust the magnification a little bit till I get it where I like. But one kind of unique thing that I like to do with the dock is add some spacers in between groups of apps that go together. So all my productivity apps followed by a space, then all of my creative apps, followed by a space, etc. And doing that requires typing a little bit of code into the terminal, but it's really not hard and I'll link up the instructions down below for you. I also like to add an airdrop icon to the dock because that's something I use all the time and it just makes it a little bit more convenient. And then once I have the dock all set up how I like, I like to use control function F3 to open the dock without even using the mouse. And then I can navigate around it and open up apps just using the arrow keys and the return key. The next thing I might as well mention is how I use and organize my widgets. Now I take a lot of them off. I don't need the stocks widget, for instance. I keep the calculator up there because I'm always calculating what my stats for the YouTube channel are gonna look like next week, next month, next year constantly. So that stays. The one main app that I wanna tell you about that I do make sure to install is Batteries app for Mac, which is awesome. It shows me the charge status of all of my wireless connected devices. I'm talking about my iPhone, my AirPods, my mouse, everything. I guess I might as well tell you how I have all my displays arranged too. So I basically almost always use a three screen setup, the LG ultra wide on top, the Mac open underneath, and then to the left of that, I have sidecar going on the iPad. Now, while I'm using that arrangement, I like to keep the monitor the actual main screen. And you can tell by the white bar that's up across the top. Now, ever since Sidecar came out, when I was using it, I turned off the left and bottom screen controls just to maximize the screen space. But I'm gonna try keeping those on, at least for a little bit, because if I wanna work on Photoshop or something, I need those extra buttons and controls. Because what I'd like to do is be able to grab the iPad with Sidecar running go hop on the couch behind my desk and still be able to use Photoshop or something with the Apple Pencil. Real quick, just to kind of wrap this up, let me talk about some of the browser plugins that I've been using with Chrome. One password, of course, I already mentioned it, but obviously I need it there for passwords and payment info. Bitly, which I use for creating short links. Genius for creating affiliate links. And then Pocket for saving articles, which I know I'm gonna read later on my iPhone or iPad. Somebody else on the team wants me to mention Ghostery, which they use to ensure that they have as much privacy as possible. So there you go, that's the end of the video. And hopefully it was pretty entertaining to just find out how I set up a brand new Mac. I'm sure as things roll along, I'll end up changing and making other tweaks here and there. And I didn't dive super deep into some of the things like Final Cut Pro, there's a lot of different tweaks that I make in there changing how some buttons function in order to make my workflow a little bit faster, stuff like that. I could make an extra long video here, but I'm gonna cut it off here. If you wanna see more, then be sure to comment down below if you found this helpful in any way. Also, please make sure to check out the podcast. It's the Daily Tech After Party. 
Daily Tech spelled T-E-K-K. After Party, you can find it in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, your favorite podcast app, wherever. Also, we're at Daily Tech spelled Daily T-E-K-K on Instagram and Twitter, pretty much everywhere. So find us. We'd love to connect with you wherever you are most of the time. And I'll catch you in the next video. Later.